Hey everybody, welcome to MoneyLab.co. My name is Matt, and today I want to show you how I'm recording the vocals on this album because as I was writing some updates and I was talking about recording the vocals, I was using words that like I probably wouldn't know if I wasn't because I'm, I'm using like my own language for a lot of this stuff. And so I kind of wanted to uh, show you how I'm doing the vocals. So this may be a little bit more technical of a video, but if you're interested at all, I hope you watch. It might be a little long, so I apologize for that. Um, so in order to, to start, uh, I want to show you the equipment that I'm working with. And I'm just, I'm sorry I don't have the mobile cam out. I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm going to move back. Hope you can still see me. I have a noisy chair, which is really difficult to work with. So I have this mic on a swivel. This is an SM7B. I think it costs like a 350 bucks, something like that. Um, it's a dynamic microphone. It's a... It's the same microphone I'm told that Michael Jackson used to record a Thriller. It's like the greatest sell selling album of all time. That's what I've been told. Um, so it's a good vocal mic and it requires a lot of power. So because it's a big, thick, dynamic mic, I have it plugged in XLR to this mixing board here, which is a Mackie Pro FX8 mixing board. And I got the gain on that channel that I have it plugged into totally cranked up, like all the way to the top. And then I can just control how much volume I need to go in with the fader. I realize I should be using a preamp. I don't have one and I'm not gonna go buy one. And so this is what I'm working with. I probably will buy a preamp after this, which I probably should have done it beforehand, but this is what I'm working with right now. So I got this on the swivel. I got the mixing board, I got my headphones. That's the only outboard equipment that I'm using to record vocals. And believe it or not, I'm doing everything right there. So all of the recording is being done at my desk. This room has pretty high ceilings. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's not a lot of uh, acoustics, which is good. There's not a lot of echo in this room because of the carpeting, but it's not the best room for recording. But it, it's better than like uh, a room with hardwood floors, which um, we have downstairs and it wouldn't, wouldn't work for this project. So that's all I'm using. And that dynamic mic is not a condenser mic. So it's not picking up the entire room. I can kind of get very specific. Although if I listen to the tracks and we will when we go to the computer on solo, you can definitely tell I'm in a bigger room. Uh, so it adds a little bit of ambience, which I can hide and it, and it actually may be a good thing. Who knows? Um, so I'm not recording with any special equipment or in a closet or uh, a vocal booth or any, anything like that. Everything's just being done right here. And I'm sitting down for most of it uh, because <laughs> I'm not memorizing the lyrics. I'm writing the lyrics in Google Docs on my second monitor here, right right there. And I pull up the, the monitor and I have the lyrics and I practice it a few times. And then what I'll do is uh, sing the verse or rap the verse, uh, whatever it is, whatever it calls for. And I'll do it sitting right in this chair Try not to move because, can you hear that? Yeah, there it is. Ugh, so noisy. Um, terrible. Shouldn't have this chair. But it, uh, it works. I just stay still, wrap into the microphone. Sometimes I'll stand up and with this uh, swivel arm, I can kind of keep it high and stand up. But for the most part, I'm sitting down. Uh, so with that all said, let's go to the computer. I'm going to show you a new song. It's called On My Own. And I'm going to break down how I do all the vocals, basically a breakdown of the entire track, uh, but a focus on the vocals. So let's go to the computer now. Okay, so what you're looking at is the Logic Pro X on my Mac, and it's for the track On My Own, which is the track, the second track on the album so far, uh, at least as we speak. And this track's a little bit more serious, a little bit more, a little slower. And I'm going to play the first part. I recorded these vocals yesterday. Uh, I'm going to play the first part up until the end of the chorus. And then I'm going to go back and show you uh, the entire breakdown of the song, but more so focused on how I did the vocals and what they all mean. So let's just play the song now. Yeah, come on, come on. I was so young, coming up on 14 It wasn't easy, albeit I was so green Didn't even understand how I got this It's funny thinking how crazy as I reminisce Growing up small town, unlike right now I got a job like Bob, got a hold down Years later, I be doing all these same things Selling chemicals, articles, pitching hot springs Yeah, 
But I don't know what to do I'm just learning about what everybody's already been through They're trying to help me and it's changing my worldview You try to speak but they've already passed you I was so dumb coming up on 23 It wasn't that hard yet I was still green I was fighting every day trying to be free But in the grand scheme nobody helped me Should I dive right in? I don't know where to begin I'll go it alone, but I don't know how to swim on my own Okay, so that's the track. Um, that's part of it. That's the first minute and 15 seconds of the track. And you can see up here, I, I've color-coded everything. Um, and I've been doing that across the project. And this this particular project has um, a lot less tracks than most. This actually, in total right now, not including this record track, uh, it only has 22 tracks, which is actually pretty light. Um, so let's just break down first the, the actual beat itself. So if we uh, just solo out the beat, which we're just going to get this um, folder of the snaps, the kick drum the actual uh, beat and some live drums that I have in the um, chorus and then this crash symbol, which is a crash symbol, uh, which I have here to just, just coming into the chorus. So let's just zoom in a little bit if we can. And maybe not that much, but let's just go to the green section. So we have, um, these are just snaps. So if we just, in the beginning, you, you'll hear three of them. And those are from a sample pack that I bought from loopmasters.com, which is called uh, Jersey Club, um, which is pretty sweet. Then I have this uh, sampler instrument, which is the 808 kick. So if we listen to the 808 kicks, um, and we're just soloing out these two tracks, these are the sub hits that you hear. I got something else playing too. What the hell is that playing? Um, anyway, oh, because I have this whole thing soloed. So if we, now you hear just the kicks. Now if we double click in here, these are uh, MIDI triggers and I kind of built this, um, this little thing. I, I took one 808 kick and made it and pitched it so I can literally play it on the keyboard. So I have, uh, you can play C and it just keeps going up and it stops. Um, so I'm working with those. So I created that. Um, I got a loop here. That's the beat itself. If we just listen to that soloed out. Um, I had that built at first, but I actually liked that pretty. I liked that a lot. So um, that worked out. And then the only other drum I have in here is this live drum. If we listen to that. If you hear that all together, it's... All right, so that's the beat. The, the biggest part of the song is the pad in the beginning. So if we just loop this real quick, um, it's this synth that I just recorded. It's uh, these, these notes here. Uh, it's these three chords. And on top of that, I'm just going to play it. Yeah, come on. All right, so that's just um, a pad. It's just a simple synthesizer that's uh, built into Logic called Alchemy. And uh, so if we just if we take off this thing called Kickstarter, this plugin that I bought, um, you'll hear it's just a pad. So it's just all solid chords. So that's it. And what I did was I bought this. Um, sidechain compression plugin by Nicky Romero. It's called Kickstart. I think it's 15 bucks. Um, and it's pretty sweet because it makes it, it gives it this pumping effect. So if I turn it on and I got the mix turned all the way up, it pumps in uh, quarter notes. So you get that effect, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and very EDM uh, as well. The other parts that I have in here, um, which are really important, are the, this choir part that comes in halfway through the verse. Uh, and it's also in the chorus as well. And what I did was I took um, a loop of a choir and cut it up so that it fit what I wanted, it, uh, what I want to happen. So if we play it, it 
So it's just it's just that same note over and over again, and I and they they changed the uh, the note, and I just moved it around so it fit with what I was looking working with. Um, and so that's really it. That's the whole that's the whole song. Um, there's not really much to it, and the big parts are the vocals, which we'll get to. So um, when it comes to doing vocals, I am recording right now, and I'm recording this video on my uh, Shure SM7B, which I showed earlier, and um, you can tell if we're, lo we're looking at this track, this is the, so I have everything titled, um, according to, uh, what it is. And I have these little images and it's color coded. So red means vocals in this particular project and gold is chorus vocals. So that's why it's, you know, ketchup and mustard. I don't know. Uh, so rap vox or vox is short for vocals. Rap vox is the raps. Now, sometimes this will be multiple tracks, but in this case, I wrapped the entire first verse all in one shot. So I practiced it a bunch of times and then hit record and just did it all at once. And then if you mess up, I just go back and I try to nail the entire verse all in one shot. And I'm just going to play what that sounds like. Uh, and it's got some effects on it. So let me just play it. I think I can just play it dry. So let me just play it dry, turn off all the effects. And this is what we're working with. So if you just listen to it. I was so young, coming up on 14. It wasn't easy, albeit I was so green. Didn't even understand how I got this. It's funny thinking how crazy as I reminisce. So that was all recorded just like I'm recording now, sitting down at this computer, just like that, reading off of a Google Doc on my second monitor. That's exactly how I did that. Uh, it's pretty quiet because I wanted that effect, and I didn't. Ha I don't have a preamp, so I didn't have the gain cranked all the way up. I mean, I do have the gain cranked all the way up on my board, um, and with a preamp, I could have got these wavelengths a little bit higher, but it actually works. It's, it's, uh, I actually have it down, uh, 4.5 decibels below zero. So I'm working in a good space right now. And what some of the plugins that I added was I added this noise gate, which just kind of like gives it, it makes it a little punchier. I was so young, coming up on 14. It wasn't easy, albeit I was so green. It's really not on that strongly, but if there's ever a break, like right here, there's a, uh, if we look real close and bring that up, and there's like a break here, what the noise gate does is just shut the volume down as fast as possible, uh, or at least without it sounding weird, um, so that you don't hear whatever's going on in this break right here. Now I could have gone through and actually silenced all of these middle parts where there's really nothing going on, like breaths. I could take all the breaths out if I wanted to, but I actually like uh, leaving the breaths in so it sounds more natural. Um, the second thing I have is an EQ with a high um, with a high pass here. So I have uh, it's pretty tinny. Uh, I got the EQ boosted here at 21 hertz and it's uh, dropped at 180 hertz. And so this makes it sound, if I turn this off, you can hear um, what it sounds like. Oh, wait, let's, yeah, turn it off. Didn't even understand how turn I on. got this. It's funny thinking how crazy as I reminisce. So now it sounds more like a phone. Um, and that's just, uh, I liked that. I kind of messed around here and, and did a high pass filter to see um, where I liked it. And I kind of liked it at a 180, all judging by ear. I added a compressor, uh, and I added a really aggressive compressor, uh, which kind of boosted the volumes for me. And then I also added a de so anytime I was saying words with an S in them, it would kind of tone that back a little bit. And then the, de the delay, which is just adding this light little delay that kind of fills the space in between the words. So now this is what it sounds like all I together. was so young, coming up on 14. It wasn't easy, albeit I was so green. You hear that delay that just kind of happens, a sort of echo. Um, and so that's the entire verse track. It's just all one track. It's all done in one take. Um, and then the second track, I just, it's called Phone, and it's really just an effect. And I just duplicated this track, moved it up like a step, and now I created this, this echo effect. So if you hear it, you'll hear it right in the beginning here. And let's just zoom in. So that's, I basically took this, so I go, yeah, yeah. come on. I say, yeah, come on, right? And so I took the word come on and I, and I put it in a phone filter uh, on, the, on another track next to it so it kind of echoes it so you'll hear it again. Yeah, yeah. Come, on. come on. That's it. And it's really just for a little bit of production. Um, okay, and the big thing here that is confusing that I talked about in my blog post is uh, I talked about recording uh, hype tracks. Um, they're sometimes called overdubs. Um, Sometimes called ad libs, 
but I like to call them hype tracks. I think it's cooler. And I do a hype left and a hype right. And what that means is, and I'm gonna just gonna play one of those tracks, and I don't know how this is gonna work with your speakers if you're listening to this, to this on headphones or not, but this is only gonna come out of the left side of the speakers um, because I have it panned all the way. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I have it panned all the way to the left. So if we play it, all I'm doing is taking um, the ends of phrases and saying them again. Now, I actually went and re I didn't just cut this up. I actually re-recorded me saying just the end of the phrases, which is very common in rap music. So if you just listen to it, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Coming up on 14, I was so green. How I got this. So it's just the ends of those phrases. And it's got a really aggressive noise gate on it. Um, and I don't put the, I didn't put a delay on this track. So I have it panned all the way left. And then I re-recorded it again because I wanted it to sound slightly different um, for another hype track. So I do two hype tracks and I pan them hard left and right. And so if we play this, they're the same phrasing. I'm saying the same things, except I'm just saying them uh, two different times and I'm putting them together and I'm panning them left and right to give the stereo effect. Coming up on 14. I was so green. How I got this. And actually, this can come up in volume a little As bit. As I reminisce. Right? Right now. No. Hold down. Let's go back to where I was. Same things. See? So, sounds weird on its own, but uh, that's rap, right? So, if we play it all together with uh, just my actual vocal track, we'll put the phone filter on, and we'll play it all, and you can hear just how the vocals sound. I was so young, coming up on 14. It wasn't easy, albeit I was so green. Didn't even understand how I got this. It's funny thinking how crazy as I reminisce. So that's the entire track. That's the entire, uh, the rap track. Those, it's four tracks, technically. Um, I've recorded, you know, it took me a couple of tries to get the rap, the rap box, you know, nailed down. But once I nailed it, um, it seemed pretty good. I tried to keep it at an even volume the whole time. I didn't do any... Uh, automations on it for volume wise. I didn't have to increase the volume at any points. Sounded pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so the next part, the only other vocal part is the chorus vocals. And actually there's two different chorus vocals and you'll find this extremely funny and ridiculous because it should be, and it is ridiculous. Um, so this is me singing and I'm not the greatest singer in the world, but I got away with this. So uh, let's just listen to the actual chorus again real quick, and then we'll go back and, and show you the individual tracks. Should I dive right in? I don't know where to begin. I'll go it alone, but I don't know how to swim on my own. Okay, so... To explain what's the what the the yellow is color coded because that means it's the chorus vocals. So the main chorus vox is me singing, and just to play the beginning real quick. Should I dive right in? So it's got a delay on it. It's got a compressor. I got the high pass filter on it. I got I boost it a little bit in the high end, uh, so it kind of gives it a little bit. Uh, it kind of pokes through the rest of the mix, and I'm gonna reveal a little secret. I am not using auto-tune, the program, on this, but I am auto-tuning. So built into Logic is uh, this thing called Flex Pitch, and I can actually tune different parts of what I'm saying. So let's just listen to this first part. Should I dive right in? So that in part, let's move it up. I can just take this and... Right? <laughs> so now I can go... Should I dive right in? Weird. <laughs> like, that's that. So uh, I did some corrections. You can do all kinds of stuff. Like, I could have... Should I dive right in? So I'm, I'm much lower in gain there, as you can see. Like, high, high, high. And then it kind of, like, dips a little bit. So I can go and... Let's see. Look for the, the gain. Gain. So I can increase the gain in this part. Right? See the, see the waveforms going up? Which is really cool. I can add some vibrato to my voice. So like make it waver a little bit like it originally had it. So should I dive right in? Oh, see, it kind of like went flat a little bit. So if I straighten it out, it kind of has more of an auto tune effect. So let me just 
bring it all the way down to zero vibrato. Should I dive right in? Perfect. And that's, I did a little bit of tuning again. Not the greatest singer, uh, kind of out of my range, and uh, worked. I mean, I at least hit the notes. That's that's the only important part. Now, I did this yesterday. I recorded this pretty early on in the beginning when I was doing the beat. I uh, recorded these yesterday. I was just experimenting, and this is really where it gets weird. So I did what's called a chorus left and a chorus right. So the same principle as I did with the hype track, I just sang the same uh, the same you know phrasing, uh, but I sang it in a high octave. And I, so I did falsetto, and I auto-tuned the shit out of these, and I put them down real low, and I spaced them left and right. Uh, just to kind of give it a little more underneath the main vocal because I felt like it was kind of just lagging there. And uh, all together, it sounds like this. Should I dive right in? Now, if you can't hear these parts, I'll play them solo. Should I dive right in? <laughs> okay. So that's me going, should I dive right in? You know, on the mic in a falsetto voice and then auto-tuning the fucking shit out of them. And that's what you get. You get, should I dive right in? Oh, wow. Let me hear that again. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> so I just added that. Uh, it sounds okay. You know, it's it's it does the trick. I don't know where to begin. I just added a little bit more to the chorus. I felt it needed something else. And then the second part of the chorus, or my favorite part, is I took my own vocal, which was uh, in here. I took... My own. So I took that phrasing. My own. Okay, which is tuned and sounds a little electronic-y. And I put it into a sampler. Uh, and I spaced those that that audio file, that clip, over the entire keyboard. My own. See? My own. My own. My own. My own. I, as I hit these piano buttons. My own. My own. <laughs> so I ended, ended up programming this little... Diddy here, and it's kind of interesting when you hear it all on its all on its own. Um, you can let's just play it real quick. <laughs> so that's the phrase. So <laughs> that's what added that. So that's all the vocals. That's the entire song. And just for good measure, I will play the second half of the song uh, so you can hear that. And then we'll go. I don't know anything. Still want to learn. Got to earn. Trying out everything. I did some black hat shit that got me tossed out. Went to the wrong outfit. Took a bad route. Bad route. Every time I got lost, I went with my instincts. Became a boss and stopped building back. I still don't know what to do, but I had to try something new, a breakthrough. After that, now everything changed. On the outside, I seem to remain the same. Could be a mindset shift or a blind death wish. I only play the hits like a stroke nine set list. Now I feel like I'm on top of the world. It's been a long time since I saw the ghost of her. I keep climbing, sharing thoughts with my rhymes, but I'm still unsure sometimes, you know? Should I dive right in? I don't know where to begin I'll go it alone But I don't know how to swim on my own All right, so that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. All right, so I hope that was like somewhat helpful, uh, somewhat insightful, somewhat whatever, uh, or you just wanted to hear the song and you sat through me talking, so uh, that's that's that. So um, that's how I'm recording vocals for this album. I wish I had better equipment. I wish I had nicer things. I wish I had better sound studio. I don't, so I'm working with what I have. And that's it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments or shoot me an email, whatever you want to do. I'm happy to answer any questions about the production of Entrepreneur, the upcoming rap album, which comes out August 2nd, 2016. That's it, guys. So wish me luck. 
Later.